Okay, I want to go ahead and get started. I'm assuming you guys can hear me. Is that true? Can you hear me? Yep, okay. So um, the first one I want to uh, start whiteboarding and sharing is um, the one where we have these infinite plates of charge. Um, so therefore, we produce an E-field. Uh, what, what kind of, just to do some review here. Now, you didn't, you didn't plot E-field versus R, but just to review. What would the E field be in this case? How would I plot it? What would it look like? Okay, nice horizontal line, nice constant, no relationship, right? Okay, good. Good, I'm glad you guys remember. Now, um, what would be the predicted? We did have a prediction here. What was the prediction for the V versus R? Direct relationship, right? So I'm going to go ahead and, and plot that. That's the prediction. Okay, now what I'd like you to do is get in your, your groups, I guess, and I'm hoping that you can kind of sketch a graph. I don't, if you want to, you can show me your actual graph on your um, Excel, or you can just kind of sketch the graph so I can kind of see what it looks like. Okay, so anybody willing to go ahead and present what they found? Because I want to go around to Yeah, I don't I don't need the equations right now. So I'm going to flip it over to Mike and just we're just going to flip it and look at it really quickly and then I want to go to everybody else. Again, Michael, the one we're looking on is the infinite sheets one. I think that's A, but I don't remember. I don't have the lab here in front of me. So, let me pass it to there we go. Okay, Michael Mike, are you there? I'm pretty... Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, what we're looking at is just the uh, the plates of charge. So I don't, I don't think I don't think this is it. This is the line of charge. Uh, wait. Let me get my paper. How about in between? Oh, maybe this is it over here. Maybe is this? Uh, you're yeah, maybe part, part A. It's the one yeah. on the right. Okay, so look, everybody, look at the one on the right there. Okay, so that kind of, of course, we're going with negative numbers there, but still, we have kind of the same kind of idea. Um, what what would you say there that looks like there, Mike? Um, probably inverse. It looks like inverse. Okay, all right. Uh, let me see if I can flip it to somebody else. So let's see. Okay. Shift it over to, let's see here. Um, how about, uh, can I shift it to, how about Ben? Let's see if I can switch, pass it to Ben. We're, tr we're trying to get consensus here. Okay, so I think we can see Ben, but but um, you can look at, oh, okay, Ben, can you talk? Yeah, can you hear me? Yep, we can see it too. Okay. So yours kind of looks like an inverse two above the, the um, horizontal axis, but then it goes kind of the other direction. Yeah, um, yeah, that's because I, I started it at, um, 0.1 meters from the positive line, and then okay. uh, just move down towards the negative line. So if I separated yeah. them out, I'm sure it'd look more inverse. Okay, but then it goes the other direction. So in a way here, this one also kind of looks like, but if you look at this, doesn't this look kind of like a linear relationship too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it, I mean, it's not giving us the direct like we kind of predicted, but it does look fairly linear except for near the ends where it starts turning into an inverse kind of thing. Okay, so I'm going to take control back and see if we can shift it to somebody else. Let's see. All right, let's see. Let's go. Let's go over to 
Um, let's go to Brooke. Okay. And that kind of looks like the maybe I'm not sure if Brooke can talk. Yeah, I can. Okay, so that kind of looked like the same thing Mike showed, except these are positive numbers, and it looks kind of like an inverse. And it looked kind of the same as what Ben's did too, but he went further. He went past the um, the zero, and we actually went to the um, negative voltages. And so, so, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take controls back and see. If Maybe. Wrong thing. Okay, let's see. Switch it. Let's see if I can switch it to. Uh, oh, let's see if I can switch it to Alex. Okay. So we're looking at Alex is there. I'm not sure if he can talk. Nope. Okay. Oh, is Alex able to talk? Hello? Yes. Who's that? <laughs> is that Alex? Yeah, this is me. Okay. Okay, so we can see on his there that it kind of looks kind of like what Ben had. Is that what you're saying there, Alex? Yeah, yeah, yeah right here. Yeah. So notice... Or, in, fact, right here. <laughs> in fact, I, I really want to stay here on Alex's really quickly. Do you notice that our prediction was that it was linear and actually more than that that it was direct and it looks as though it it seems as though it is linear although near the ends okay so um, I want to kind of look at this um, and hopefully you guys can can hear me here. Um, what we saw was kind of a kind of a something that kind of did this went down, and then it kind of went the other direction. Um, but at the same time, keep in mind that this is actually a two-dimensional simulation, and we're trying to do a three-dimensional simulation. So, or we're really wanting something that's three-dimensional there. So I'm going to make a prediction here that it would have been if we could have got something that was a better simulate, simulation, we could, would have got something like this. So notice that this is also linear, just like our prediction, but it's kind of going the other way. It's, it's kind of negative instead of being our positive slope. Any questions about that? All right, so let's go on to the next one. Okay, this one, um, I think this was part B, but I'm not positive. This one was looking at a charge conductor. This was um, outside that charge conductor. And we're looking at what the E field is. So actually, we're looking at trying to figure out the V versus R. But what was the E field for this? What kind of relationship was it? We're not talking about inside, so maybe I'm on the wrong one. Inverse square? Inverse square? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that. That's the inverse square relationship. So 1 over R squared. Okay. Um, and what is our predicted um, V versus R relationship? This one we also have a prediction. Yeah, this is an inverse relationship, right? Inverse. So one over R. Okay, so um, I wanna come back up here for a second for this one. We saw already a limitation here for this uh, simulation, which is a 2D simulation of something that's really three-dimensional, is that we started getting these kind of um, end effects here. 
we got something like this. And this end effect is because what this was was because this was a 2D simulator. It's a 2D simulation of something that's really 3D. Same problem here. Okay, That's a limitation of this simulation. Keep in mind that we might have a similar problem here. We might end up having some kind of strange thing happen. Okay, So uh, could you go ahead and whiteboard this one really quickly and uh, I will come over and see you in a second. Can everybody? Can anybody uh, share what their graph looked like? Their whiteboard or whatever. I want to look at what the V versus R relationship looked like. Okay, how much more time do you guys need then? Okay, Kurt, I'm going to over to you guys. Okay, so that's what so so you, you're saying it looked exactly like that then? So uh, you were predicting that it would be an inverse and it looks like it is an inverse. So that's pretty good. That's not too bad then. So it's a little flatter, so not a perfect inverse. Is that what you're saying, Michael? It's pretty close, so it's close to that. Okay. All right, so it looks like an inverse. We're, we're going to go over and look at some other groups just to make sure that we have consensus. I think, let's see, Ben said that he, his group is ready. So, also, kind of looks like. Wait, no, it's not. Is it? Um, yeah, I got I got inverse, but just by trying to linearize it, uh, what gave me the uh, best was. Oh wait, that should be one over r. Um, okay, so. To the fourth. Okay, so it kind of looks like an inverse, but when you tried to linearize it as an inverse, it wasn't perfect. And the best, the easiest, or the best fit was when you took v to the fourth versus one over R. Is it possible that is it possible that, that the reason why it wasn't a perfect fit when you tried to do the inverse is that maybe the simulation is a two D model of something that's really three D? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. 
Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can try a different group. So we got two that said inverse. Let's go to, let's see, how about, let's see. Um, I'm up Puni to see if I can pass into him. Okay, it looks like Puni is also saying it kind of is an inverse, but it's flatter. Puni, can see my screen? Yep, we can see it. Okay, uh, so yeah, we had the same thing. Uh, it wasn't exactly inverse, but it was it was close. I think our R squared was like 0.8. Okay, is it possible you think, Puneet, that it might be because it, the simulation has those, you know, it has limitations? Yeah. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna take, um, um, it's just simply not gonna be possible to go to all the groups. Does anybody uh, have something totally different than what we've seen so far? No, okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and draw then that in. So what we found was something a little flatter. So sort of a one over R relationship. But again, maybe the reason for that is it's a 2D simulation of something that's supposed to be three-dimensional here. Any questions before we move on? Okay, so then moving on to the next one. Wait, I have a question. Now we're looking at, oh, question, Puneet. Um, we only have three graphs on the lab, uh, but we have oh, four, yeah. like uh, sections that we did. Yeah, let me explain that one. Um, so um, I believe what it is is we have a V versus R, and you'll see kind of a dotted line like this, I think. Uh -huh. And this was the outside part. So you kind of did this part right here outside. Okay. And we're getting ready to look at the inside part. But I'm doing it separately as a separate graph. That way we can kind of look at it. But whatever you get as an answer for this part, then is going to be put on that same graph here. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. So then moving on to the next part here. This is going to be still the spherical conductor, but now it's inside. Um, keep in mind this is a conductor, not an insulator. Okay. So what would the E field be inside the conductor? This is something we know. Okay. Everybody looks like everybody's saying zero, or at least everybody feels comfortable in saying stuff. If you're not get if you don't know this, um, you can ask questions why. If you're like, uh, I'm not really sure. Any questions why? All right, so the E field is zero inside the conductor. Okay, then um, this one we don't really have a prediction or we didn't really talk about it. I think that more than likely, if I ask you what the voltage is, actually, let's just do it right now. Could you guys type in what you think? Hopefully, don't put in something you read online or something. What's your gut tell you? What do you think the voltage would be inside if the E field zero? Keep on, come on, everybody put something in. Yeah, it looks to me like everybody is saying uh, constant, no relationship, and a lot of people are saying zero, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and say zero. I'm pretty sure that that's the get reaction. And whether you're saying zero or not, you're saying it's constant relationship, and we, you can see that this is a constant relationship. It just ha so happens to have a y-intercept of zero. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at what your your simulation was for this. Again, keep in mind this is a simulation, so it's probably not going to be perfect, okay? So if you can go ahead and, you know, whiteboard it, just do a sketch, that'd be good. Does any group need more time to do the sketch? Okay, I would like, to, I think I'm going to go ahead and pass the presenter role over to Emily. I'm open.
I just kind of want to see their sketch. Maybe Emily's not able to take take it. No. All right, let's see if I can try to pass it to somebody else then. Let's see. Raj, let's see if I can pass it to you. Okay. So, uh, Roger, is this what you're saying it is? Hello? Hi. Is it, so, is that what you're saying it is, that graph there? Uh, well, um, I'd say it's the same thing, what I, we had before. If I could. So, did, did you actually get zero? I mean, is that supposed to be zero? I, I see that it's no relationship, but I don't know. Is that zero, or what is that? Uh, I don't know, but that right there is what I got from my data. Oh, right there. Okay, now let's look at that, everybody. Can you see that it's kind of constant, although it's not perfect? Is it possible that that might be the simulation, do you think? The limitation of simulation, Raj, do you think? I think. Okay, and also, do you notice that that's not zero? That's like probably if you had to average that, it's around maybe 450 or so or 400? Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you very much. I'm going to take the from you guys. So I see a few people saying that's what you got as well. Get something different. Mine looks different. Okay, Michael, let's see if I can pass it to you. Okay. So, Michael, can you talk or not? No? Okay, well, maybe I'll talk for you. So everybody should look in. He can type. Okay, so everybody's looking over at the left where it says inside the shell part B. So this is V versus R. Notice that it kind of looks weird, doesn't it? It kind of looks like maybe a, a top opening parabola, or like we can almost see the whole parabola. But is it possible, Michael, that this might be because it's um, a, a 2D simulation of something that's really three-dimensional? You think? Okay, so notice that when it's close to zero, it starts to go up, and then it kind of flattens in the middle, and then when it gets close to the other side, it goes up as well. But if you were to average those, it kind of flattens out there. So again, but notice that's not zero. It's around 400 volts or 450 or something like that. Any questions? Okay, and then I saw somebody else says that you guys got something strange. I let me go ahead and take controls. I think I think Andrew said that he got something strange. So I'm going to Oh, was it? Uh, Drew, I'll pass it to you next. Okay. Oh, um. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. So is this the one inside the sphere? Uh, no, this this one. Oh. Is. Oh, oh, that is weird. Yeah. Oh, you know what? And, uh, Andrew, I think what you accidentally plotted was, look at your vertical axis. I think you plotted oh. R versus V. But that's all right. Don't 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 switch it. Let's just look at it. I think we can imagine this in our head. So look at your horizontal axis. Do you notice those values are all, it's not perfectly flat, but maybe that's because, or not perfectly vertical, I guess, in this case. Um, yeah. Maybe that's because of limitations of the simulation. Did you just, did you start at one side and go all the way to the other side, or did you just go from one side to about the middle? Um, I just went to the middle. To the middle, okay. I think then this might actually be uh, similar to what Michael showed us a little bit ago. So is there anybody else that wants to kind of have, oh, that's right, I'm gonna to go to, let me, and I'm going to go to Drew, because he wanted to show us what he had too. Oh. 
Okay, so I'm not sure, Drew, can you talk or not? Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. So is it the top graph? That top graph work? Okay. Uh, the bottom one here is the linearized. So yeah, let's just look at the top graph. All right, so what we got basically with the parabola. So did you kind of start in the middle and then work to the edge? Is that what you did there? Yeah. Okay. And again, so if you would have went from one edge to the other edge, it probably would have shows the other side of that parabola, right? Right. Yeah. So that's kind of what Michael uh, had a little bit ago. So uh, again, can you see that it's kind of bottoming out around, what is that, probably about 430 or so? Uh, is it possible that the reason it's going up like that is because it's a 2D simulation, you think? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Did anybody get anything different? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take... Thank you very much, everybody. I think you guys are exactly right that it is... We have this nice constant relationship that's zero here. Um, or excuse me, this constant relationship, but it's not zero. It's going to be something more like this right here. Now, the actual was kind of a parabola. I'm, I'm getting rid of that. Um, that was probably the 2D simulation kind of thing. Okay. So it probably would look something more like this. So our prediction of it being constant sounds good, but the fact that it's zero, that's, that's not exactly right. Okay, so let's move on to the next one then. Now, um, for this one, what is our our E versus R relationship going to be for this one? So it looks like everybody's saying inverse. Can you guys still hear me? I had to do something there. Can you guys still hear me? Okay. So uh, you guys said inverse. So that's my attempt to try to do an inverse relationship. Um, I'm not sure. Do you guys have any kind of prediction what this would look like? Oh. Prediction. I want a prediction, not something you read online or something. <laughs> so I see constant. Okay, that's his prediction. He's not changing. Okay. Um, I think that more than likely, you probably would say if this is a positive charge, they would probably start high. And as you go toward infinity, somewhat, right? Something like that. Do we agree? Maybe maybe head towards zero. I think if you made an honest prediction, gut prediction before you look anything up, they would probably start high as you get close to the the charge, and then as you move away, it probably decrease to zero. Now, what kind of function is that? That we don't know. Okay. So uh, I think I want to go around and look at your graph. I don't want to see a linearized graph, please. So I want to kind of go around, let me see here. Uh, let's see. Um, can I pass the, let's see. Let's, I'm gonna pass it to Mike, I think. Let's look at his graph. Okay, so um, what what did yours look like? You can just kind of sketch what yours look like. Can, can you talk, Mike? Yeah, I guess okay. we didn't have that one. Yet. So you could just sketch what yours look like over there. Uh, all right. If you want to switch to someone else, we can come back in a minute. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, anybody want to? Okay. I'll go ahead and take control back. Anybody willing to kind of share theirs first?
Okay, so Anatoly, let's see if I can pass it to you. All right, so um, I'm not sure, Andrew, can you talk or not? All right, so yeah, this one's the one that I got. Okay, so let's look at the left-hand side. It does kind of start up high and it's decreasing. So Andrew, first of all, um, this is really a 2D simulation. How well do you think it would fit the data here? Do you think this would, you know, would we have any limitations in this case? Uh, not really. No, because we got this infinite line, which is also a two-dimensional kind of thing instead of three-dimensional. So this data here, we don't have to worry about being suspect or anything. This is pretty good data, probably. So his graph, again, looks over here on the left. I'd really rather you not try to uh, linearize this one. Um, but uh, Andrew did try, and oh, he got rid of it. But he plotted v squared versus 1 over r, and that was that was the best fit he could do. Okay. Um, but tr um, just kind of ignore that for a second because we need to see if we can find a pattern in all of this. Uh, is there anybody else that we can kind of transfer to and we can check out that way we can get consensus on anybody else's graph we can look at? Okay, let's see if I can switch it to Mark. Ooh, that's kind of a neat screensaver in there. Ah, okay, so. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, mine looks like majority. Okay, so it kind of starts out high and then it kind of decreases. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and take control back. Did anybody get anything different? Nope. I'm going to go ahead and say that that is what the consensus is, that it kind of started high and then kind of went like that, it kind of decreased, okay? Um, and if you try to do an inverse fit for this, it doesn't fit. And a lot of the other things that we've tried before doesn't exactly fit. Okay, so now we need to talk about these a little bit. We need to figure out if we can see a pattern, okay? And some of you might have you know, figure out the pattern already, I don't know. So um, let's start up here. I want you to kind of look at, even even your prediction is okay, because really this, this linear relationship, we have a linear relationship over here. So that was pretty good. Notice here the E field is one over R squared, and here we have one over R. For this one here, we had the E is a constant zero, and here we have the voltage is a constant, but not, not zero. Here we have that the um, E field is one over R, and here we have some other function for V versus R. So can anybody suggest any kind of um, relationship between the E versus R graphs and the V versus R graphs. In other words, there has to be a relationship between the electric field function and the voltage function. <laughs> We're going to use calculus, but it's more than that. Eventually, we'll use calculus. Okay. What's something, let's go low tech in terms of using the fancy words of derivative integral. Let's go low tech. If you look at the V versus R graph, How could you might might how might you get the E versus R graph? Okay, can you see that the slope over here of the V versus R? Actually, I want to look at the actual one. Can you see that the slope over here is a constant? In fact, the slope is a constant negative. So this slope. Well, it's hard for me to write. The slope is 
equal to some constant. It's equal to some constant negative. Some negative constant. Okay. Whereas over here, this is just simply some constant positive value. I'm going to look at the next one. If I asked you to find the slope of this one, we're going to have to use calculus for this. So I'd rather type this instead of writing. That seems to be faster. If I have y equals 1 over r, that's the same thing as y equals r to the negative 1 power. What would dy dx? Again, this is a slope. What would that be equal to? Wouldn't that be equal to, and I see at least one person there wrote it, negative r to the negative 2 power? Or said another way, the slope of that graph is equal to negative 1 over r squared. Okay. So I want you to look at that. So the slope of this graph, which is 1 over r, gives me negative 1 over r squared. That's not what I have here. I don't have negative. I don't have right here. This function is not a negative. It is not negative. That's positive. It's not negative. It's positive. So can somebody tell me some kind of relationship between voltage and the electric field? And I don't want any kind of calculus terms. If I have a voltage graph, how can I figure out what the electric field graph would look like? The silence is deafening. Ooh, Kurt suggests, ooh, we have two people suggesting. So Kurt and Ben suggest, what about the negative of the slope? Ooh, Andrew concurs. What do you what do you guys think? I've got three people on board with that. Absolute value of the slope. Okay, so we have two possibilities. We have okay, we've got here, let me write these down. The possibilities are that if I want to figure out the E field, that's going to be equal to negative dv dr for people not in calculus this dv dr means slope so if you want to write a little note to yourself slope so negative slope or the other possibility is absolute value of dv dr hmm Okay, so let's let's look at that a little bit more. Um, let's see. Let's try it on this one here. What would be the slope of this graph here, the V versus R? What would be the slope of that one? The slope is going to be zero. So whether I do negative zero or absolute value of zero, it's going to give me zero, right? So that doesn't help us. Let's see for this one. Hmm. Well, this one's hard because I don't really know what this relationship is. Is there a way that I can go backwards? If we're saying that E is equal to negative slope, then how could I figure out V? Yeah, anti-differentiation, right? So one possibility is that it would be negative integral of E dr. And the other possibility is that you guys are suggesting is V would be equal to absolute value. I think I'm doing that right. Hopefully you guys are checking my math there. Absolute value of E dr. Uh, 
Okay, so let's try that for both of these. Okay, so if I were going to do the negative integral of 1 over r dr, antiderivative, for the people who are not in calculus, remember the derivative is that you decrease the power by 1 and then you multiply um, by that old power. We have to do just the reverse. Okay. So people are in calculus here. What would this be? People who are in calculus. Because I can't really increase the power by one, right? Yeah, this is one of those tricky ones. So this is going to be um, natural log of r, but then I have the negative out front. So it's equal to natural log, negative natural log of r. Or the other possibility is it's the natural log of R, right? If that's the absolute value of that. Right, those are the possibilities. So which one is this graph? Is that the negative natural log of R or is that the natural log of R? This graph right here, what is that graph? You guys might have to do this on your calculator. Plot it. Is that the natural log of R or is that the negative natural log of R? I'm getting several answers, but not everybody, which makes me think I've lost some of you. Okay. Looks to me like most people are saying negative. So that means, uh, which one is it then? Is it going to be E is equal to negative slope or is it going to be e equals absolute value of the slope which one is it negative slope right okay so that's the relationship that i wanted you guys to see is that the e field is equal to negative slope Okay, or you can actually write that as an integral as well. Okay, so that's kind of our consensus here. Now I've got a little bit of practice here in terms of um, doing some calculus, but I'm running out of time. Uh, so I think what I want to do is I want to look down here at this one, and because this is part of your lab. Uh, so what I suggest is maybe you, if if you're in calculus already, this shouldn't be a problem. If you're not in calculus, then you might want to buddy up with somebody who is and see if you guys can work together on those three problems. Now this right here, though, I would like to do before you leave. We have a, uh, this, yes, it's in the packet. This is the lab response in the packet. Uh, and if you don't have the packet with you, no, I was planning on having this due on Friday, not on Monday. Um, if you don't have the packet with you, you can download the uh, worksheet um, on the My Big Campus page. Okay, so what I have here is I have an insulator in here, it's spherical, and it has a charge of positive Q on it. And then I have a uh, conductor that's outside of it. Okay, so I have a question to you. If this has a charge of, I need to change my colors here. It's not going to let me do if this has a charge of positive Q distributed uniformly throughout my insulator, and this is a metal conductor, what would be on the inner surface here? What's on the inner surface smeared everywhere? Negative Q, right? Negative Q. And what would be smeared on the outer surface of my conductor everywhere? Yeah, positive Q, right? Okay. That's a couple conceptual questions I wanted to make sure we answered. Um, and now uh, what I want to do is I want to kind of plot what the E field would look like. So imagine doing the Gaussian. Okay, this stuff is stuff that we should be able to do. And 3R is way out here uh, beyond 3R. What, what kind of relationship would it be beyond 3R? What kind of relationship would it be? Inverse square. Right, inverse square. So I'm going to kind of draw inverse square 
function here for the E field. That's supposed to be an inverse square. What would the E field be inside this conductor between 2R and 3R? It's a conductor. Zero, right? Good. Okay, then what would the E field be between uh, the um, inner surface of the conductor and the um, outer surface of the insulator? What kind of relationship would it be? Imagine drawing a Gaussian. Then. Another inverse square, right? With this inverse square, where would it start at? Would it start at the at the maximum height of the last one, would it be higher or lower? Kurt says the same height. What do you guys think? Because E is going to be equal to maybe. Okay, E is equal to charge enclosed, which in this case would be Q over actually i'm going to do k to make it easier kq over epsilon excuse me over r excuse me r squared and this r here is a lot smaller than the three r out here okay i'm getting higher lower all kinds of stuff yeah higher right because this R is much smaller, so it's going to be an inverse square, kind of like maybe out here somewhere. Such that if I were to connect this, if it if it would be possible, you know, it would be in line with it. Those dots aren't really there, okay? And then I have this insulator in here. So what kind of relationship would it be between zero and R? It has a uniform charge that, yeah, there you go. Direct relationship. Does that make sense? Any questions? Because now we're getting ready to do the, that should have been review. Okay, now we're getting ready to do the hard part. If you have to go, I understand, but I thought this would help you a little bit. Okay, what kind of relationship would it be out here beyond 3R for the voltage versus R? Inverse, right? So that would be an inverse relationship. Okay, hopefully that looks inverse. Not very good. What would it be? This is tricky now, be careful here. What would it be inside the conductor between 2R and 3R? Oh, I'm seeing question mark. It would be constant, right? But would it be zero constant or what? I have one zero and I have lots of constants. Would it be zero? Not zero. Not zero, right? We have a constant voltage, but not zero. My question is, where would the voltage be at? Would it be would it be you know lower than what I started with there at 3R? Would it be higher? Would it be the same as at 3R? What would it be? Yes, the same. There we go. The same. There you go, like that. Okay, then what about, uh, again, if you guys have got to leave at any time, I understand. We're almost done, though. What about between the insulator and the uh, conductor? Yep, another inverse, right? And hopefully you'd see that it would actually be kind of like that. Does that make sense? Any questions? Now we finally get to the funnest part, and that's done. Where you can leave whenever you want, and I'm done after this. This is the hard one. This is the one we're looking to see if you guys really understand the fact that E is equal to negative slope of dV dr. Now think about what the relationship is right here. I need to change color here. Think about what that is. That's really E is some function of R. Right? So think about what you would have to have over here so that when you find the slope of it, you get, or the negative slope of it, you get R. 
and that'd be quadratic, right? Now think about that. Is it quadratic starting at zero and going up? Or is it starting up higher and going down? Right, because that negative sign, that's right. So the hard part is it's actually starting up here like a parabola and coming down like that. Pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. Any questions? Okay, there is a bonus on there. You should be able to answer everything else. Uh, there is a bonus on there. I'll leave that up to you guys, though. Okay. Yeah, my brain hurts, too. I have a headache, Rod. Sorry. Um, any questions? Okay, well, see you guys later. Yes, I do want to get this lab from you on, on Friday. Thank you guys for coming. A few minutes to discuss. Yeah, I'll probably give you about five minutes to collaborate. But try to have it done, please. Thanks. Bye.